to the stage now, driver of one of the Stuart Haas Racing Fords, Monster Energy Ford, Kurt Busch. Kurt, thanks for coming out today. Go ahead yes, and crack that open. You, yeah. yeah, I was getting a little parched. All right. Well, since you, since you've already started off this way, talk about what you think might. You you've been around the monster folks for a long time. Um, dare I say, what kind of energy are they going to bring to this? What what do you see from them promotionally, and that you've worked from them that you think might benefit the sport? I mean, no pun intended. The the energy level that they have uh, is incredible. Uh, it's really a a small company, uh, and they really run a, a tight ship with uh, their different departments, um, whether it's uh, the activation in the marketing field or it's the, uh, the videography, uh, then, if, then you can get into the, the stunt driving or the athletes and uh, the different forms of motorsport that they're in. Um, they, they do a great job with the team that they have and it's, it's about making impressions. I mean, one of the fun things I got to do this off season was to drive a, a NASCAR car down an open highway in California at 180 miles an hour through the, the sand dunes region while they're taping uh, dirt bikes jumping over and monster trucks and buggies and snowmobiles in the sand. Uh, you name it, they'll create it. They, they have a lot of fun in what they do and that's, that's what they're always doing is looking for the next fun thing and that's what they believe NASCAR will bring to them and they will bring it to NASCAR. It's just the energy, the excitement, the fun, the entertainment side of it, and it's about making impressions uh, for this um, beautiful claw that they designed years ago, and now it's become an icon on itself, uh, where it's as uh, infamous to the youth as a, as a Nike swoosh that's on your shoe. Uh, it's really a fun brand to work for. Been with them the last six years. Uh, they, they've put me in rally cars in Italy. Uh, they, they've put me in dune buggies in the sand. Um, they've had me on a, uh, a MotoGP bike stationary, though. I didn't drive it. I, my dad said I'd live a longer life on four tires instead of two. And the, the group, though, you just never know what's coming up next. And it's been great to work with them um, in the TV booth at X Games, uh, even going to Supercross and dropping the gate with those guys. Um, the, the phone rings, and you're just waiting for the excitement on the other end of the line. So I can't wait to see what we can pull together for NASCAR and how we can continue to build their brand and the brand of NASCAR. All right, we'll open up for questions. We'll start over here with Hill. Hill Overton, WIXC Radio, Kurt. Uh, you're the last guy that won a championship for Ford way back the early part of this century. How special Don't would it be? Don't make it sound so bad. <laughs> well, you and I were wow. young then. Yeah, we but, were young then. Yeah, but back, uh, how special would it be to you this year to be the next driver to win a championship for Ford? In other words, back to back for you. It is a special homecoming feeling to head back to work with Ford and to have them, um, you know, with, with our power and our bodies at Stuart Haas Racing. It, it it really feels neat to come back to a place where I've I've seen the faces before and the way that uh, the structure has been polished up on and the way that there's more depth with Ford Performance. Etzel's done an incredible job over the last decade to continue to improve. Uh, guys like Raj Nair, um, Dave Parasak. The whole gang is uh, is ready and, and willing to help in all areas and directions. And the best thing that, that I've seen already come out of things is uh, the engineering staff at Stuart Haas. Uh, it's like they just opened up a whole new book of things to look at and to to advance our program further from where we were with GM. Right, we'll go in the back to Tom and then over here to Lewis. Hey, Kurt. Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. You've raced the Indy 500, you tested a V8 supercar, you drag raced. Where did the Race of Champions experience measure up to some of those? The Race of Champions is very unique, and it's, it's a lot of fun. It reminds me of when the top 16 drivers in our playoffs get locked in and we go do media appearances together or we're doing a, a dinner or a function. It's a, it's a chaotic frat house feel. And to race against the Europeans, uh, the South Americans, it, it truly was a, a unique challenge in all the different vehicles that the Race of Champions puts you in and, and how, how it's structured and how it all works. But it's the fun. It's the, it's the other side of it, too. At night, everybody's up until 2 a.m. having a good time. And you go back to the track the next afternoon, shake off the cobwebs, and then you're out there competing against the world's best. And after my first race Sunday, I got beat by Hinchcliffe by only a fraction of a second. And I was feeling a little down. And I said, you know, I, I think I've got the wrong mentality. I just need to go like this is a green-white checker. 
every time I go out there. Just grab gears, hard on the brakes, hard on the gas, attack the track and go for it. And then I started winning. I was able to start to get a, on the other side of the, the second bracket that I needed to get in. And then Kyle was winning as well. He was beating guys like Jensen Button and Felipe Massa. And next thing you know, the, the, we advanced as the NASCAR group as brothers and representing the USA in the finals against Vettel. Uh, that was an incredible feeling. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a, an amazing atmosphere to race in. And it had that European feel, though. And hopefully it'll catch on here. I mean, the, the Race of Champions has been going on for 27 years, but this was the first time on U.S. soil. So hopefully it'll catch on and get some stronger legs for next year. Now we'll go Lewis, then up the row, and then over here to Chase. Kurt Lewis Frank from Reuters. You come from a time when you had plenty of preseason testing. Now you've got all new equipment. How does that affect you as a driver? I mean, we've spoken to the Ford people last week, but as a driver, you're missing all those all those miles on a on a on a track. What do you do? Well, it's because the the teams have more depth. Uh, there's more simulation. The, the engineering staff has gone through things uh, at a much higher level. Whereas it used to be the driver and the crew chief that would go to the track and then come back with a notebook of things. Now the notebook has been gone through by the lead engineers and they've, they've prepared it as best as possible before we show up. And limited track time saves money, but at the same time you end up spending it on personnel and, and hiring the key guys to make the cars safer, faster, stronger. And I know we've done a great job to transition with Ford uh, because I've seen some of the, the drawings and the way that Doug Yates has the engine set up. Uh, we had to change a couple around uh, a few of our uh, suspension settings to adapt to the way that he had his engine set up. So, yeah, there might be a couple bugs here or there, but I'm not too worried about it. We got really good quality people at Stuart Haas and uh, with Yates Engines. Zach Atanzo, Eddie French, so you had Steven Tyler playing at your wedding um, not too long ago. So you seem like someone who really appreciates classic rock. So what was that like for you? Uh, it was it was epic. I mean, I'm still on, on that cloud, uh, enjoying it with my wife, Ashley. Uh, we wanted it as a surprise for everybody. And so we had the curtain in front of the stage area. And when the curtain dropped, everybody's like, oh, wow, that's an awesome tribute band, man. They, they, they look great. <laughs> oh, no, no, he's starting to sound like Stephen Todd. Oh, and then you should halfway through the first song, people just rushed the stage and it turned into a full on rock concert. It. It was a great feeling, and it all came together through some of my connections with Monster Energy. Um, tailgating one night after a race in Talladega on a Sunday night, you meet this person, you meet that person, you make a phone call on Monday, and next thing you know, Steven Tyler says, yeah, I like NASCAR. Yeah, I like the Bush Brothers. I'll come out and do it. We'll go to Daniel and up here to Chase Wilhelm. Uh, Daniel McFadden with NBC Sports. Uh, we, we have... One of the few drivers who are coming up to the Cup Series for, for the first time this this season, some who have never been in a Cup car. When you remember back to the, the weeks and months leading up to your first full season in the Cup Series, what, what were the thoughts that weighed on your mind going into that, and who were you leaning on at that time to get you ready for this the big stage? It, it was an extreme case of butterflies in the stomach and nerves that are hard to explain on just being nervous and overwhelmed and out of your element, so to speak. And you, you try to lean back on the, the previous racing that you've done and remember those rookie moments with uh, the other divisions that, that you would have raced in. And there's nothing like going to Daytona as a rookie and starting out with, with the Super Bowl or the biggest race possible first. And the guys that I was leaning on were my teammates at Roush Racing then. And that was Mark Martin, a true uh, champion that just got inducted into the Hall of Fame. and. Jeff Burton was a veteran driver on, on that team, and those are the guys you go up and ask questions, even though your questions are very juvenile, but you try to lean up against those guys to calm your nerves a little bit. All right, last question for Kurt. Uh, Chase Wilhelm, FoxSports.com. Kurt, you talked about the race champions being like a, a big fraternity, and if it's anything like college, frat boys not have, not know how to have some fun. So any like funny moments or good stories to share from that weekend? For some reason, everybody was forgetting what gear to put their car in when they were leaving the staging area on Sunday. And Scott Speed literally drove through Castro Nevis in the staging area and, and, and wrecked two cars. Uh, my little brother thought he was in first gear. He was in fast reverse. And he backed into another car. It's like, guys, why are we all so nervous as the American team? Uh, it, and then there's guys like David Coulthard who are 
I think they, they are machines because they shouldn't be allowed to race that fast and party that hard in the same 24 hours. <laughs> I, I tell you, those Europeans, they, they know how to do a, a lot of good things in race cars, but uh, they're, they're pretty good at staying up late as well. And uh, Peter Solberg, a, a legendary uh, rally racer, he's a monster athlete. Him and I hit it off really well, and it's just great to share stories, have fun, and, um, and then go out there and represent your country. And so, I, again, it, it's, it's, you're goofing off the whole time, but you're absolutely serious, and you want to beat the other guy as soon as you put your helmet on at the same time. Kirk, thanks for 